Hello and welcome to our modular course on how to write macros for Excel. In this first module we're going to give you a very brief introduction as to what macros are, what they do, and by the end of the module you will be writing your first macro. It is assumed that you will have some knowledge of Excel when you're taking part in this course, that you know for instance how to add and subtract numbers between cells and use simple formulae. However, if you really want to get the most out of Excel, you have to start looking at the code that underlies it and manipulate that code yourself. So what can a macro do? Well, let's imagine you have a set of data which includes a lot of duplicate numbers. Now, I want to delete the duplicate numbers and one way of doing that would be to very simply go to a cell, hit delete and delete that cell and I could do that as many times as I needed to. But if there were 10,000 rows of data it would be far simpler just to hit a button like this and have it all done for you. So there is an example of a macro. Very simply you click remove duplicates and it takes away all the duplicate data with a minimal of fuss. I can even reinstate them. So by the end of the course, we will hope you will be completely confident in writing a macro like this for yourself. But before we can go any further, we need to do a bit of protocol. This version of Excel is Excel 2003. And to write programs within Excel 2003, first you will have to be able to access macros within Excel. So the first thing to do is to go to the Tools menu, go to Macro, and select Security. If you want to be able to selectively run spreadsheets which contain macros, you should set your security level to medium. As you can see, it's already the case on this machine. So once you've done that, click OK. Next, we want to identify where we can write all the code which we're going to learn. So again, it's under the Tools menu, under Macro, and then under Visual Basic Editor. You will note the keyboard shortcut is Alt plus F11. That works in all versions of Excel. So let's click on it now. The first thing you will see is a blank sheet in front of you. This is the area into which you would write code. One day, your code may look like this. If it looks a bit advanced at the moment, do not worry, we will learn all of the codes within here before the end of the course. Let's now look in more detail at this coding environment. On the left hand side you will see a project window and a properties window. If you do not see them then under the view menu there's a project explorer and a properties window which you can select in order to get those windows. The property window is irrelevant for now but I just want to look at the project window. Within Excel you have a series of sheets. The region to which code applies may just be one of these sheets. It may also be the whole workbook. Therefore, if you want to write code in the whole workbook, you can double click on this workbook. And if you wish to write code just within a sheet, in this case we will write code in X2, which is the name you see in brackets, then you can double click on that sheet. Within each sheet of a working environment, you are then free to write subroutines. Now these always adopt the same notation, and so if you want to write a macro, you always have to start as follows. You write sub, then a name, which in this case we'll call my first macro, open and close brackets afterwards, hit return, and you now see it says end sub. So the coding environment is anything between the top and the bottom. Our first macro is, like all macros, going to solve a problem. The problem may be a very familiar one. In cell A1 is the number 1. In cell A2 is the number 2. What do the two numbers add up to? Now one way of answering this question within Excel is to go in another cell and stick an equals sign, A1 add A2. However, we can internalize 
the way this is done. If we return to the code window, but want to see exactly what we're doing within Excel, we can select at the top to restore the window down. Play around with the size and make it so you can see your Excel spreadsheet as you write code. The key to writing successful code within Excel is to be able to refer to everything that occurs within an Excel spreadsheet. So the way you refer to cell A1 would be using the following notation. You write cells, then you open a bracket, and at the bottom now you see we're being guided, we're being told to put in a row index, and as it's the first row, the row index is 1. And also we're being prompted to put in a column index, which as A is the first column, is also equal to 1. Therefore, cells 1, 1 would refer to cell A1. So in this case, we want to make sure that cell A3 equals cell A1 at cell A2. Cell A3 is in the third row, so is cells 3, 1, and it equals cells 1, 1 at cells 2, 1. That's to say that cell A3 is cell A1 at cell A2. So we've written our very first macro. How do we run this macro? There are a variety of ways of triggering macros, which we come to in later modules, but for now let's content ourselves with this play button. If you press play, it will run the macro. And the question mark gets replaced with a 3. Now suppose cell A1 changes to 2. Now the addition in cell C3 has already updated because it's an Excel formula. To get an up-to-date response from a macro at this stage, we will have to press play again. But again, we can get the answer. Something else you can do is to put a number in a cell. So let's try and put a number in cell C1. Cell C1 is in the first row, but the third column, so we can say cells 1, 3 equals 10. And then when we press play, the number 10 will be entered into the cell as if by magic.